Hey everybody, Taylor here. It's March the 1st, it's about 60 degrees outside. The sun is shining and it's a beautiful day. So we're playing in the garden. I'm gonna give you a little tour of what we're doing here in the garden on the Gritty Homestead. So this is about 2,000 square feet. This is, what is a, this is what used to be a cattle pen. We used to feed our cows in here, uh, put the mamas and babies in here while the babies get a little bit bigger, things like that. And uh, what we are using is what's called a Ruth Stout method. Uh, I discovered this a couple of months ago from uh, the channel Back to Reality. They have a great channel. Go check them out. And uh, what the Ruth Stout method is, is where you use composted hay in layers on your ground to create a no-till, no water, no weed garden. And uh, so what I did is we had a whole bunch of hay left over from feeding our cows over the last couple of years that had gotten torn up and rotten. And uh, what I did was just roll that out about a month ago throughout this pen and uh, put about four to six inches deep of hay. And this is nicely compost, composted and nice and deep down in there. You can see it's about, I'm only just a little bit in and it's nice and moist and there's lots of rot and hay and decomposition going in there, bugs and worms and things of that nature. So what uh, the Ruth Stout method is known for is to make a no work garden basically. You just plant your vegetables and you shouldn't have to weed them and water them or whatever till the ground and that hay constantly composts underneath on the bottom layer creating new topsoil and new dirt and nutrients for the trees or for the plants. So over here we're, we're working on fruit trees too. I got these fruit trees from Lowe's. We have apples and peach trees and um, there are cheaper easier places to get trees from but since it's our first year here on the Gritty Homestead, we're going to go with Lowe's just because they have a one-year plant warranty. And that way, if they all die, we can take them back and start over. So I'm gonna, I had the pleasure, uh, Sarah, my mother, and my grandmother and I, we had the pleasure of going to the Mother Earth News uh, Fair down in Belton, Texas a couple of weeks ago. And we sat through a lecture from a gentleman named Howard Garrett, who is known as the Dirt Doctor from Dallas. And uh, his lecture was on planting depth for trees. And a uh, very interesting lecture that opened my eyes to the way we plant trees here in the U.S. And uh, what his main point of his entire lecture was burying the trees up to the root flare. And so I'm going to show you an example of our trees here. The, this is a peach tree that came straight out of the pot. Uh, just cut the pot off of it a few minutes ago. And uh, as you can see, it's a straight trunk coming right out of the, out of the dirt. What Mr. Garrett uh, preaches is that you should only bury your trees as deep as the root flare. So this is a tree right here that I've already broken up the root ball and, uh, and exposed the root flare, and then I'm going to plant it. Now the root flare is where the first couple of large roots start to flare out. And so Mr. Garrett uh, says that you should always plant your trees at no, de no deeper than that root flare, ideally with that root flare being slightly exposed. And he says uh, that this will uh, improve the germination of the tree or the growth of the tree, the fruiting of the tree and the longevity of the tree as well. So looking at this peach tree right here, right out of the pot, it is a solid mass of wads of roots. And uh, this is pretty hard. If I was to just plant this right into the uh, pot uh, or the ground, it would take years for this root ball to break up and the roots to actually start to expand out and grab nutrients from the dirt around them. So the best method I have found here on the homestead uh, to break these root, root balls up is a just a water hose with a squirt nozzle on it. Uh, Mr. Garrett uses a uh, air compressor with a air excavator which uses a big worm screw compressor and um, just blow, basically blows the dirt off the top of them to prevent doing damage, but that's like a $10,000 piece of equipment. So what we're all you're using is a squirt nozzle and a water hose. And so I'm just using the squirt nozzle to break up this root ball, break up all this mulch and compost that this tree's been putting in for the last couple of years at the nursery. And exposing that root flare. So this one really wasn't that bad. You can see that the root flare kind of starts right along in here and that was only, it starts right along in here and that was only about an inch uh, deep deeper than it was planted. However, this one over here that I have already exposed, broken up this big ball of mulch and exposed it, it was actually quite a bit deeper. 
you can see that this tree was originally buried up to about this point right here and the root flare doesn't start till down here so that's about three or four inches too deep a lot of people mistakenly bury their trees up to this point right here this little nub and this is actually the graft point of the tree so uh here modern fruit trees are actually sprouted and grown to be in a small size and then they're actually grafted to another rootstock of another species or another type of plant to just promote the uh, successful growing of that tree and that way you can put a peach tree onto a stronger root system uh, of another plant and they are grafted at a young age just to uh, bring them together. So uh, a lot of people mistakenly bury them up to that point right there when it's actually should be down here to this root flare down here. So uh, this tree in particular, I've already broken up this root ball. I have these nice roots stringy, nice and coming out all over. Big messy root ball here uh, that's uh, going to be able to spread out and the roots are going to go every each, each direction. Rather than something like this, if I was to just bury it directly into the ground, it would just continue to grow in on itself, intertwine, rob nutrients from the other roots around it, and it would take years for that root ball to break apart and actually be able to spread out and uh, grab the nutrients around it. So uh, also here in the garden, uh, well, back to the fruit trees here. I'm just planting these fruit trees in these uh, tubs that came from a uh, dumpster from behind a land landscape gardening supply company that I asked them if I could have them. And uh, sure, they just threw them in. And um, so these I've planted down with the root ball or the root flare exposed, you can see out of the top. And this is just local topsoil that I scraped out of this uh, garden pen here and just dumped into these buckets with the tractor. And uh, hopefully these are gonna do well. I've just staked them in with some bamboo stakes and um, we'll see how these do for the first year. And uh, if they all die and fail, I've got a one year warranty on them, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good about them. I think they're gonna be successful. And then we're gonna plant them into a field that we've designated in the back of the property as an orchard. And uh, that's about a three to four acre field back there that we're gonna just do fruit trees in. Uh, also in the garden, we have onions planted today. Our last frost date is uh, projected to be in about two to three weeks. And, um, but the 15-day forecast from the Weather Channel says that there's going to be in the 70s for the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to be brave and go ahead and put these onions out. Uh, they do have a little bit of uh, more tolerance for the cold weather than most plants do. And um, it was real easy to plant these. Just poking, poke the finger down in the hole into the, the hay and I drop the onion in. And that's really all I've done. So we're going to see how these do with this roost out method of uh, layered gardening as well. And this is about four bundles worth. Uh, I've got another about double the space for onions, so I'll get about four more bundles and plant those uh, as well, uh, maybe a little bit later on so that we can have a kind of a more progressive harvest of onions this year. All right, so I'm going to break up the rest of these fruit trees and get them planted in the buckets and uh, continue on our way. Uh, we're going to be doing some fence repairs over here where the cows have broken through this old rusty pen that we're going to be starting to work and redo this year and uh, we'll go from there. All right, thank you for watching.